invisible, deadly, and effective. Those are just a few of the adjectives often used to describe the F-35 Lightning II, a controversial aircraft that is shaping up to be the future of American aviation. It is the most widespread and used fifth-generation model on the planet, but while it is undetectable by radar, it is also vulnerable to criticism. This lightning arouses passions both for and against, and, to better understand what it is about, in this new military aviation video we'll go through its engineering and history in depth. Behind every great combat unit is a long development process to turn a bunch of metals and circuits into a destructive machine. Today is the time to meet the F-35, the great American promise. The history of the F-35 dates back to the early 1990s when DARPA, an agency specializing in innovative military projects, laid out the groundwork for the development of a stealth fighter aircraft that would replace all light and ground attack aircraft in service. Finally, $750 million and 10 years later, Lockheed Martin was presented as the winner of the contest with its X-35 project, the first incarnation of the F-35. Huge production costs, delays and impressive technical qualities would become constant elements in the life of the Lightning II. The F-35 is a fifth-generation single-seat aircraft that has several differences from the F-22 Raptor, the other great American fighter aircraft. The Lightning II is smaller, more conventional, and has a single engine. To give you a more precise idea, the F-35 is 15.6 meters long and has a wingspan of 10.7 meters, which is considerably less than the Raptor's 19 meters in length and 13.5 meters in wingspan. Listing the qualities of the F-35 we find that it is neither the fastest nor the best armed aircraft in service. With a maximum operational speed of 1,900 km per hour or Mach 1.6, it is well behind units such as the Chinese J-20 or the Russian Su-57, the latter being capable of reaching Mach 2 at cruising speed. The main advantage of the F-35 is its stealth and detection technology. Like an experienced hunter, the Lightning II will find you before you know it's near. That powerful detection system remains the ace up the sleeve of this aircraft and its main difference from the competition. The F-35 suite of sensors and communications equipment is intended to provide situational awareness, control, and electronic warfare capabilities to take down enemy attacks and take unknown communications offline. The main sensor aboard the F-35 is its ANAP-81 active electronically scanned array radar, designed by Northrop Grumman. The radar is accompanied by a Lockheed Martin electro-optical target designation system, capable of marking numerous enemies simultaneously. It is mounted under the nose of the aircraft and provides the same capabilities as other targeting systems, but retains stealth properties. The F-35 has six additional passive infrared sensors distributed throughout the aircraft as part of the system that acts as missile approach warning reports launch sites and detects approaching aircraft. As if that weren't enough, it also replaces traditional night vision goggles, allowing the ship to operate missions at night. The F-35 sensors have been designed and integrated to provide a consistent picture of the aircraft's environment. All sensors directly influence the main processors to support the fighter's mission. For example, the ANAP-81 works not only as a multi-mode radar, but also as part of the aircraft's electronic warfare system. All this flow of information is concentrated in a unique display design, in which the pilot's helmet is integrated. This is known as head-up display, and it refers to the multiple indicators and screens that keep the pilot fully informed about altitude, speed, wind incidents, and all kinds of relevant data. For its development, the various psychological reactions to sizes, colors, and sounds were taken into account. But all this deployment would not do much if the F-35 did not have considerable firepower. It has six underwing pylons, with a capacity of 6,800 kilograms and two internal bays with four pylons each with a total capacity of 8,100 kilograms to load a combination of paveway laser-guided bombs and satellite-guided bombs with the JDAM kit. In addition, it can operate missiles for combat beyond visual range and the future Spear 3 projectile that is still in development. The attack package is completed by a GAU-20 automatic 25mm machine gun. While we shouldn't judge a book by its cover, the F-35 cover is impressive. 
In its design, new processes were applied to the materials, in particular to titanium, which was cryogenized to improve its resistance and make it lighter. Other very abundant components are aluminum and carbon fiber. Currently, there are three different models, each with small variations. The F-35A is the standard, used by the United States Air Force. The F-35B has vertical landing and short takeoff capability similar to the British Harrier. Finally, the F-35C is intended for naval use with larger folding wings, which makes it more expensive than the other versions. Despite their differences, they share many of their characteristics. But as we anticipated, the life of the F-35 has not been a smooth ride, it has been the subject of several questions for overpricing and failed tests. Before we continue. Do you think the F-35 will be as successful and used as the F-22 Raptor or the F-A-18? Leave your answer in the comments. For each unit of the F-35, the United States pays between $77 and $95 million, not counting the thousands of bills already destined for the production and refinement of technology. This is added to the cost of flying, which is around $50,000 per hour, which triples the expense of other similar ships. Of course, good things are always expensive, but this budget barrier was one of the main problems, although not the only one. We also told you that there are three variants of the F-35 and that caused several complications during the first tests, units that didn't take off, speed failures and even a Lightning II that fell from an aircraft carrier. The reason is that the United States opted to unify the projects of all its forces instead of developing three different ships. Today each version of the F-35 is perfectly adapted to its use, but in its early stages poor planning was revealed when running the program. Unlike other comparable aircraft, the F-35 has already seen action in the Middle East at the hands of Israel, the main user after the United States. What the papers promised was confirmed by the amazing performance of the plane. While the J-20 and Su-57 outperform it in theory, it's hard to assess them without seeing them in action. At the moment, the Lightning II is postulated as the next king of the skies. In the factories and hangars of Russia, an aircraft is being built that worries everyone in Washington since, according to European sources, it will be superior to the F-35 Lightning II. This mysterious competitor will be able to reach a speed of Mach 1.8, or 2,200 km per hour, without using afterburners, and can even be piloted remotely by a pilot on dry land. This is the Su-75, one of the most ambitious war promises of the Kremlin. On paper, this new stealth aircraft is truly impressive, but then again, it's a long way from paper to the skies. There is a long way to go to see it operational, and even more so for it to enter service. But as we are enthusiasts of impressive aircraft, today we invite you to learn more about one of the most promoted projects of Sukhoi. Come with us to Russia to board the Su-75. The future king of the skies or pure propaganda? Although the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union is a thing of the last century, Moscow and Washington remain in constant competition. The numerous aerial defeats suffered in Ukraine highlighted the Russian need to update its fleet of combat aircraft. Although the Ukrainian army received aid, a power like Russia cannot be defeated by a country that, on paper, is militarily inferior. That is why the Su-75 Checkmate is part of an extensive agenda to take Russian aviation into the future. With a history of great chess players, naming its future fifth-generation aircraft Checkmate sounds like a suggestive idea. Surely the Kremlin hopes that this unit will be a lethal piece to beat the United States on the Great World Board. The Su-75 prototype was unveiled during the 2021 MKS Airshow in a ceremony attended by Vladimir Putin himself. One of the first issues that caught the attention of experts is the similarity between the Russian plane and the F-35, at least on the outside. Both planes have dual movable tails, a long fuselage housing a single engine, and diamond-shaped wings. But, before we shout from the rooftops that the Checkmate is a copy, let's keep in mind that all stealth aircraft are restricted by aerodynamics. This determines 100% the design of the fuselage and many other issues related to the shape of the plane. 
The motorization has not yet been revealed, but the engine should feature vectored thrust, with the nozzle axis capable of shifting both up and down. For sure, it will be similar or derived from the Saturn AL-41 engine, although the Kremlin has kept this information in the deepest of secrets. As could be seen at the 2021 exhibition, the new Sukhoi will have the landing gear moved to the left side of the plane, and will have a floor or spherical infrared camera in the front part of the cockpit, just like the Su-57. The ends of the trapezoidal wings are also interesting, in which missiles and detection or electronic warfare pods can be loaded. According to the aircraft's designers, the Checkmate is intended to fly with a range of up to 3,000 kilometers, carry a payload of up to 7,400 kilograms and reach speeds of up to Mach 2. The fighter will also feature an internal weapons bay with five missiles and an automatic cannon, all inside the aircraft, to enhance stealth capability. In case of missions that do not require stealth, it can also load weapons externally. It is estimated that the Checkmate will be highly adaptable and will be able to carry a huge variety of weapons, be they with infrared guidance, for ground support operations and even for combats beyond the visual range of the pilot. This aspect is important to keep up to date and give it a longer lifespan, a closed design is more likely to fall behind technologically. Another curious fact is that it will only weigh 18 tons, very little compared to the 30 tons of the North American F-35. The Russians boast that their active array radar system is capable of tracking 30 targets in real-time continuously. It also adds a state-of-the-art electronic warfare system and integration with other battle systems, supposedly in the style of the F-35. As we analyze the list of capabilities that the Kremlin lists, the Su-75 seems more like an illusion than something possible. According to Sergei Kemazov, general director of Rostec, the company in which Sukhoi is integrated, the Su-75 will carry a group of integrated drones that will be able to engage six enemies simultaneously. In addition, a future version will be unmanned and can be coordinated with manned units thanks to artificial intelligence. They also state that there will be a two-seat version, a short takeoff and landing version and another capable of operating from aircraft carriers. These capabilities make experts doubt Russia's ability to carry out such a project. Keep in mind that the Su-57 has been constantly delayed and although several units have already been completed, mass production has not yet started almost a decade after its public presentation. The Su-75 presents another problem since, even if they could make a prototype that flies, the Russians themselves admit that they need the support of a foreign investor to pay for this party. It is rumored that the United Arab Emirates could be interested in paying for development and production so as not to be dependent on American F-35s or the French Rafale, but for now these are all rumors. In part, this need for investment explains the ostentatious presentation of 2021, Russia needs to promote its project and generate as much interest as possible to bring it to life and not add it to the graveyard of incomplete projects. Kremlin engineers sure took notes after repeated delays with the Su-57. Repeating them would be fatal. Before continuing, we want to know your opinion. Do you think that Russia has a chronic problem with unfinished projects or is it bad Western press? You can leave your answer in the comment box. According to those responsible for its production, each checkmate will cost between 25 and 30 million dollars. It's not a cheap model, but compared to the F-35 70 million dollars apiece, it looks like a godsend. Of course, when it comes to warfare, too good to be true also applies, and not because it's about Russia. If we can learn anything from the tortuous path of the North American F-22 and F-35, it is that the initial prices can rise up meteorically, especially when trying to apply new technology. Even so, even with the possible questions, this worries the United States a lot. Russia is not an economic power like China, so its strategy to expand networks of alliances is to collaborate militarily with similar countries. Having a $30 million fifth-generation fighter on the counter is a huge draw for any nation looking to forge new alliances. Everyday new projects are added to this arms race that increasingly resembles the Cold War. At the moment, the Su-75 is just an ambitious idea, but it's also true that this is how some of the best aircraft started. Thank you for joining us until the end and we'll meet again in the next episode of Military Aviation.